I'm not here to try to get Nike canceled. I'm not here to try to get anybody canceled. I'm here to have a conversation around disability and inclusion and what that looks like and where we're doing it well in society and where we still need to grow and to push. Welcome to Chez Jeunesse, the place of new beginnings. My name is Catherine Hubert, and I founded and own a French-inspired cafe where, as a team, we are on a mission to change the way that our world understands neurodiversity and employs humans with disabilities. Our restaurant was born and is based in Greensboro, North Carolina, and that's where we practice and teach our mission and model. This is our channel where we dive in deep to who we are, what we do, and why we do it. Our hope is that this content is empowering to disabled and non-disabled humans alike, and that no matter no matter what perspective you are coming from, employer, employee, parent, friend, or Shazeness fan, you feel welcomed, you learn something new, and you walk away with a deeper appreciation and understanding of humanity. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. I'm so excited to have you. Truly, truly, I'm excited to have you. I've been reflecting on that this past week and just the gratitude that I hold for the community that's been gathering around this channel. It still feels like this tight knit community and the honor that that is to have you be part of it and to be part of this experience and this process with me. I'm so grateful. So thank you for being part of this little channel and for showing up every week and for continuing to engage and to ask questions and to stop me when you see me in the restaurant and to talk about it. It means so much. Today's video is going to be a continuation of last week's video. So if you missed last week's video, you can check that out here. We talked about performative allyship, what that term means, and then gave a couple examples. So quick recap, performative allyship is when a business or an organization gives the appearance of supporting a marginalized group, but doesn't actually follow through with their resources or their time or their commitments. It's just for show and oftentimes shows up in marketing campaigns to make a business or an organization look like they're doing the work <laughs> without them maybe actually doing the work. For those of you who don't know the language of Chez Jeunesse and me, the we, the versus the I, this is a little history lesson. When Chez Jeunesse was opening, it was just me working for myself for almost a year before I had a team and before I actually had a physical space. And I started doing social media and newsletters and the website and all of that to gain awareness and to actually have an internet presence for people to come back to because we live in an age where if you don't have an internet presence, you don't seem very credible as a business. So I was kind of setting all of that up and I was like, it's just me, but I really do believe in having a team and that we will have a team. See, there it is again, that I will have a team. And so I started using the language of we. And that has been so deeply ingrained in me that I still a lot of times when I am speaking about something that is personal to me and this business, I'm tempted to still say we. A lot of times that's helpful because I am talking about the collective we, but in examples like this, when I say we were talking about, we were not talking about, I was not talking about. So I'm trying to, as I've been stepping out more, as a disability integration coach and as a speaker and I have this YouTube channel, practicing saying I when it's just coming from me and we when it's something that our whole team is involved in, but I obviously haven't totally figured that out yet. All that being said, performative allyship. One of the examples that I gave in that video was of a disabled person on Instagram who was talking about Nike and how they are using disabled mannequins for their advertising and their marketing to show athletes with one leg wearing one shoe, but that you can't actually just buy one shoe from Nike. That was an example of performative allyship. They look like they're doing the part, but it's not actually accessible to the group that they're supposedly targeting or showing that they support. As I was reflecting on that today, as I was preparing for a different YouTube video, I was like, you know what? I talked about that on our YouTube and I kind of just took it as legit that everything that person said was true, but I didn't really follow through and do all the Nike research for myself. So then that got me really curious. So then I started Googling and searching on Nike's page. And I found a whole bunch of interesting things. And then I called Nike because I couldn't find all the things that I needed. And then I had a conversation that was semi-helpful, but not fully helpful. 
And all of it still points back to there are areas of inclusion, but we're not being fully inclusive here. So we're going to break it down and I'm going to show you what I discovered and also then as I'm looking for accessibility in other businesses and on our websites, what am I looking for? What's catching my eyes? So I Google Nike, I pull up their website. I'm looking on their shoes. I was like, just from navigating their website, if I'm looking at a pair of shoes and I was looking at women's shoes because that's the size shoe that I wear and I identify as a woman, but I was looking at the women's shoes and I was like, there isn't an option in the ordering process at least to select only one shoe and there doesn't seem to be any other wording or details about requesting accommodations or what to do if you're trying to request just one shoe so i was like okay so i'm not it doesn't seem obviously accessible from the website and from the ordering options then i started getting more specific in my search so nike and disability inclusion and then that led me to the job side of Nike, like if you're going to have a career with them. So that was like the jobs.nike.com slash disability inclusion. They have a whole section on diversity, equity, and inclusion. And under that tab, they do have disability inclusion. So we will give them props for including disability as part of their DEI work because there are a lot of businesses and organizations who aren't doing that still. So that is a plus for Nike. I will also preface, this is gonna be a little scrambled today because I've been doing a lot of talking. I did a workshop this morning that always makes my brain a little bit scattered. I had a cute shirt that I was wearing. I totally sweat through it because I was so nervous about my workshop. So now I had to take a t-shirt off of the merch <laughs> here in the restaurant so that I had a shirt to wear for the rest of the day. So I'm a little bit, a little bit human over here today. Anyways, props to Nike for having a disability inclusion section or category of their diversity, equity, and inclusion work. I started looking at that page. The thing that jumped out to me immediately was up at the top where their slogan reads, if you have a body, you are an athlete. And the thing that stood out to me about this immediately is the asterisk on the end of athlete. I could not find on this page what that asterisk, 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 asterisk. That's gonna drive me crazy. The asterisk, I think if, Asterisk. If I say it fast enough, maybe you won't know which one I'm, it is and if I'm saying it wrong. The asterisk. It was on the end of almost every time that they said athlete on the whole page, but not every time, at least 50%. But there was nothing that that seems to be leading to. So I was trying to figure out, I was like, are we clarifying here what an athlete is? Are we saying that this is a specific type of athlete? Are we saying this person isn't really an athlete does the asterisk symbol mean something else in disability inclusion that i am not aware of because i also noticed it in their video logo along with a few other symbols and then i noticed it again down at the bottom of the page there was a tent set up outside that looked like a disability inclusion organization and there was an asterisk on it i'm not familiar with that as a symbol or a sign for disability inclusion i'm aware of the infinity sign for autism awareness i might just be missing something there but it also wasn't described anywhere so that felt like a missed opportunity to me and also was just kind of confusing so that was one thing i noted right away and then I read through the page. There was some good information and I was like, there's still not really any information about accessibility for one-legged athletes. There was some information about an inclusive or adaptable shoe that Nike makes, which does look interesting. I don't have a need for that shoe, so I'm not exactly sure of the mechanics and how helpful it is. I'm probably not the right person to give a review on it, but it seems like the design is designed for humans that may have limited mobility with their hands or with their fingers. So getting the shoe on and off and tightening it is adapted. So that is cool. But then I realized I was like, I'm not really getting the information that I need. So I called Nike. I will give props to the customer service rep that I talked to, was very friendly, was very polite, did not know all of the answers, but was definitely willing to try to help me and was patient with all of my questions. None of what I'm saying in this video, because I got called out on this, I think in the Shane Gillis, I reference back to that somewhat frequently because that was the most feedback that I've ever gotten on a video. But like, cancel culture sucks. Like this is what's wrong with society, blah, 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 blah. Obviously I took that very to heart. But 
I'm not for cancel culture. I think it can be very destructive and that oftentimes it's not actually helpful in our society growing. I am for accountability and I think there's a difference between cancel culture and accountability and that if you have a public platform and you're going to use it like I am, like a comedian is, like Nike is, whoever it may be, then there is accountability that needs to take place for our words and actions. Sometimes that happens very organically. There's accountability in my restaurant. If I have bad service or poor sanitation people or bad food, people do not come and eat here anymore. It's a natural consequence. I've been held accountable to the fact that I am not delivering on the goods or the services that I promise. If I'm using this YouTube platform, if I'm standing up and giving speeches, if I'm giving incorrect information or I'm not being kind or respectful and someone calls me out on that, that's me being held accountable for not being prepared or not delivering information in a way that was kind or respectful. That's very fair. Me talking about disability bias and the bias that's present and that I see is fair. That's an observation. It's something that conversation can happen around and it's me trying to promote change and growth. I'm not here to try to get Nike canceled. I'm not here to try to get anybody canceled. I'm here to have a conversation around disability and inclusion and what that looks like and where we're doing it well in society and where we still need to grow and to push. So little caveat there. That being said, the customer service rep that I talked to was very friendly and helpful, was patient with my questions, but also did not know all the answers. So I asked if an athlete with one leg was buying a pair of shoes, could they buy just one shoe? He had me repeat the question. I repeated the question. I was like, yes, it's called the Nike one shoe bank. Then I had him repeat that <laughs> because I didn't understand it at first. And I was like, the what? And his instructions were, go to Google, type in Nike One Shoe Bank, and you'll find the information. So I was like, cool, thank you so much. While I have you on the phone, can I ask you what the asterisk is after the word athlete? It took him a little while to figure out what page of Nike I was even on. Once we got onto the same page, then he looked at it and he was like, I see what you're talking about. No one has asked this question before, at least that he had talked to. He was like, let me take a look. So he kind of looks through the page and finally was like, I don't know. I don't know the answer to your question. I'm not sure why it was there. Thank you so much for your time and your help. I appreciate you. That was the end of my phone call with Nike today. So then, <laughs> this is the last part of my story. Are you guys just captivated by my experience today? Um, I found it very interesting. I've said for a long time, if I were to have an alternate career path, I really think I would make a great spy or detective. Not maybe for the aggressive parts of the job that could come with it. Like I watched Mr. and Mrs. Smith, the remake, and I could not do that, but in terms of gathering intel and information. I'd be good at that and I would really like it. So Google Nike One Shoe Bank. What pops up? Really nothing from the Nike <laughs> website. I'm so confused. And most of the information that does pop up is really old. The first response was from cutabovetheknee.com where they said Nike offers One Shoe Bank which from the reading that I did from that, from Nike's Twitter account, again, this post was like six years ago. There's nothing current. And then there's some other forms and things that I found, but there's not something readily available on the current Nike website, which is an accessibility issue. So if this is something that's offered, it's not very widely publicized or talked about, and it's not accessible in the sense of I go to buy a pair of shoes and there's something there that says, if you need an accommodation, if you're interested in a one shoe option, whatever that would be, call this number or this is what you need to do to request it. Like none of that is where you would need it to be if you were a human buying a shoe or a pair of shoes. Like that should all just be on the general page, in my opinion, if it's really gonna be accessible. Like first, it's not accessible if you're having to go or like, how, how would you know if you don't know to Google Nike One Shoe Bank, how are you supposed to find this information? So it appears that part of this shoe bank is that if you are a disabled human, disabled athlete, you need just one shoe, you can get that shoe for free from Nike one time a year, you can make the request once a year only. You cannot request the specific shoe that you want. You can request the category of shoe that you want, and then they will send you one of their choice in that category that you specified for free once a year. Other than that, you buy two shoes at full price. That's not accessible. <laughs> one, the information is not readily available. It's not something that's being promoted. They've got these videos. They've got their accessibility page. 
they've got these marketing campaigns, like that would be an amazing opportunity to actually include the information. And said there's a lot of talk about like how they're including disability, but how do you actually be included if you are someone with a disability? It breaks down there. So it's an effort. I don't think it's a super helpful one and really sucks that if your need is one shoe that you can't, like you either buy two and then have one that you're never gonna use or you don't actually get to pick the shoe that you want and you get it for free and you only get one per year. So it's limiting. It's not an equal opportunity, which means that the access isn't fully there. Pros for Nike, they are talking about it. Disability inclusion is included in their DEI work. They are putting resources towards it in some areas, for sure. You can tell that there's resources being allocated. It doesn't seem like it's fully landing or resonating in all areas of inclusivity, at least. I understand that there are more disabilities than being an amputee that has one leg. That seems like that would be a common thing that you would encounter in terms of disability accommodations in the shoe business. I do think that they're adaptive shoes, that that's a good step. That's a good step. But it does feel like if there are resources available and they're not being talked about and they're only available sometimes and you have to go through very specific channels, like I'm a non-disabled person who needs to order a pair of shoes, I can easily do that through the website and pick the style, the color, the size, order it to my house. I don't have to talk to anybody. I don't have to do anything extra. Like it's all in there. If I'm a disabled person who needs to put in a request, then I have to do some detective work to find the 1-800 number that I need to call. And then I need to call and actually talk to someone in order to get a pair of shoes. Like that is a lot of extra steps. So that's my feedback. I will also say they had a video on their inclusivity page. Short, it's kind of promotional. They did promote a lot of accessibility in that video, so that's something worth checking out in terms of giving a audio description of what's being visually represented, having an ASL interpreter interpret the message, listening to disabled voices. Like There was a lot of positivity in that campaign. It can also still feel performative if then we're really being a champion of inclusivity and accessibility, but not following through in providing those things. Change and teammates, your keyword this week in order of our new cocktail menu is Paloma. If you are finding this content to be delightful, hit the like button. Your call to action for this week is what conclusion do you jump to when you see the tagline with the asterisk at the end of it? And also, if you can correct me on how to say asterisk, 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 also appreciate it. I think that's it for today. Thank you for being here. Again, it's been just an honor to spend this time with you. Any other questions or thoughts, drop them in the comments below and I'll see you next week.